still came to me a few times telling me about how he felt sexually unfulfilled by your relationship. <laughs> you always spent too much work with... You always spent too much time working and not pleasuring him. He went into great detail about it. I was a little uncomfortable. What? That's not true. <laughs> I always, I always spend enough time pleasuring him. You have to believe me. I always let him climax first. Sometimes I didn't even come during sex. Okay, I didn't need to hear that. Hi guys, I just want to take a second to thank all my patrons here who have donated to me. No matter how much they've donated to me, it really means a lot to me. And if you guys want, you can check out my Patreon and help support me continue to make Yaoi videos. Thanks guys. Hi guys. Um, welcome to another Yaoi Let's Play. This time we're playing Chasing the Stars, as you can tell. And I guess this is the opening to the game. So let's just uh, let this play through. I guess we're meeting all the men. I'm not sure even who I'm gonna go for. They're just. Men are just flying. Oh my god, look how wet that was. Jesus. That was a really wet kiss. That made me uncomfortable. That was gross. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're gonna get a lot of side characters. Maybe they'll have a really engaging story. We'll see. We will definitely see. <laughs> That's a lot of side characters. That says like at least six or seven or something. Mm, well, I think I'm already ruling out the monocle guy. That's a little too much for me, I think. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he'll grow on me. I haven't even... I should wait until I at least know his personality before I... Before I say something like that, shouldn't I? I probably should. <laughs> All right, let's just get started. This game features some adult situations between a two a, two men. Just two? Only two at one time? Damn. Damn. Every time one of the scenes is going to happen, you have the option of skipping the scene. Alternatively, you can decide now if you prefer to enable or disable all the adult scenes without being asked anymore. Enjoy. Um, show me all the sexy scenes. I prefer to see only kisses and light stuff. <laughs> Let me choose scene by scene. I don't want to see any adult content. Content? Thanks. Okay, here, let me choose scene by scene. I mean, I'll always choose to see it, obviously. But, you know, that'll really let me know when it's coming. <laughs> okay, um, hmm. The aspect ratio of this game. What is going on here? <laughs> um, if, if I had to choose a favorite place in my town, I think it would be this. The cafeteria of my university. It's located at the top of the building, so the view from the picture, wi from the picture windows... Picture windows? It's located at the top of the building, so the view from the picture windows is astounding. Okay. I think this game takes place in the future, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it takes place in the past. I mean, in a sort of fictional past. I forget now. I can't remember. What the hell is a picture window? As you can imagine, my friends and I spent a good amount of time hanging out here. I don't know how I'm gonna do this voice. <laughs> I'm still- I still need to figure this out. It's the first episode, so it's gonna take me a while to figure- figure out how to do the voices. It's- it's my space for solace, you could say. Except for today. Today's the backdrop to my worst nightmare. What do you mean you're leaving me? <laughs> Wait, is that us? Are we getting dumped? Nil, my boyfriend since high school is breaking up with me. Ah, oh, shit. I'm really, really sorry, what? Tears, but... Um... This isn't going in the right direction. Literally, who even needs him? He doesn't even look that cute. Okay, he looks pretty cute, but he isn't hot, okay? <laughs> we don't need him. We can find the hotter men. How come? We've been together for six years. Last year, I even... I know, I know, okay? Don't remind me again. Look, tears... I don't know what else to say. 
Nil is a poet and a songwriter and the sweetest guy ever, but ironically, it seems he can't find any suitable words to say goodbye to me. Has he ever loved me? I can't understand a single thing right now. Please, leave me alone. Nil stands up from my table and looks down at me with concern. Whenever you need a friend, please call me, okay? <sighs> yeah, yeah. I skip my afternoon class and instead stay in the cafeteria, too immersed in self-pity to carry about to care about the lessons. Look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> What's with that face anyway? Ooh, this is this is poppin'. <laughs> this music. Mm. <laughs> Who are you? An hour later, the seventh cavalry comes to my rescue in the form of my best friends. Paul and Li Lila share the same major, history, so they arrive simultaneously, joining me at my table after their class together. As they sit down, I explain what's happened. My friends share a pointed look and then Lila shrugs. I think a night out is in order. What about the Night Spy Club? We still haven't been there and I've heard it's great. Maybe I need to turn the music just a little. I'm having a difficulty hearing their voices. Oh my god, that's up. To my utter surprise, Paul just hums in agreement. Hold on. Have you guys been listening? Why aren't you surprised? <laughs> Another shared look in which they apparently decide that it's Paul's turn to respond. Dude, don't take this the wrong way. But I doubt this news surprises anybody. Wait a minute. Are you saying Nil is seeing someone else? I'm so furious that I can hardly speak. I highly doubt it. Yeah, it's not that. Coming, all right. <laughs> oh God, or my relationship was a train wreck from the very beginning. But, but you never said a thing. What did I do wrong? Paul sighs and rubs my shoulder. How about we leave that conversation for later? I agree with Lila. A night out clubbing is exactly what you need right now. We can talk when you've relaxed a bit. Okay. Um. <laughs> was. Is this name Paul or is it Paul? 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 Like, oh, Paul, like P A U L? Is that how you're supposed to say it? I have no idea. <laughs> I shrug confused. If Paul says so, Paul. If Paul Paul says so. We grab a bite at the street stall and then Lila and Paul drag me along to the new club. It's elegant, perhaps too much for my taste, and the music isn't bad, but I'm not really in the mood. I gulp down a beer and then chase it down with some shots of whiskey. Around us, everybody seems excessively happy, chattering loudly with what now seems to be big fake smiles. I try to dance for a little while, prompted by Lila, but soon I give up and rest my elbow on the countertop. I watch the people come and go as they drink and flirt and joke around. I'm suffocating here. I push my way through the crowd to the main door. I need air. Relax, just have a drink. Damn. Just because your boyfriend dumped you. Once outside, I slump on the ground, close to the club door, and rest my back against the wall. I'm in a side alley next to a, to a busy main street. Every car that passes sends a flash of light over my dark corner. People come and go. I calculate it must be around midnight already. Apparently, I calculate that. <laughs> what? Is this... Are you Lee? Like, what do you, what do you mean? Look at a watch? Or just... I don't... Okay, fine. I look up at the sky. That's how I calculated it. That's how I calculated the time. I looked at the angle of the stars in relation to the moon. The stars seem to be laughing at me tonight. Do they? They just seem to be looking at you. They just seem to be just floating up there. So cold, so far, distant, remote, yonder. While I'm stuck here on this piece of rock and water we call home Earth, I guess it still takes place on Earth. <laughs> While I chuckle with regret, I notice a silhouette sliding down by my side. I don't even need to turn my face to know it's Paul Paul. <laughs> Good old Paul Paul. We've been friends since high school. Has it been five years already? Yeah, could be. He passes me a bottle of beer without a word. I take it and have a good gulp. When I finally turn to face him, he's looking at me with fondness. I'm fine, before you ask. <laughs> like hell you are. Hey, let me pretend, will you? I'm not that drunk yet, but I'll get there. I feel like Paul would have a gentle voice. At least that's how I'm gonna do him. 
I think, I thought, I don't think this game is fully voice acted. I don't think. I look up at the night sky again, and I feel Paul getting comfortable by my side, and joining me in my stargazing. Yeah, there, see, he's not even saying his line. It's not fully voice acted. But that's a good thing, that's, I kinda like that. I kinda like partial voice acting. Not everything, but you know, some. What a clear night! Yeah. I remember all those nights in your bedroom when you forced me to learn the name of all the stars that were visible through your telescope. I laugh a bit at this. Do you still remember then? Hmm, some, yes. We stay like that for a few minutes, watching the night firmament in the silence. But at last I decide to break the peace and finally ask. I sigh before speaking. So tell me, why did you all know that Nil and I were going to break up? Paul shifts in his sitting position, uncomfortable. No. It was clear as day that you always put your career first. It was just a matter of time until one of the two of you decided to end the relationship. And Neil came to me a few times, telling me about how he felt sexually unfulfilled by your relationship. <laughs> you always spent too much work with... You always spent too much time working and not pleasuring him. He went into great detail about it. I was a little uncomfortable. What? That's not true. <laughs> I always... I always spent enough time pleasuring him. You have to believe me. I always let him climax first. Sometimes I didn't even come during sex. Okay, I didn't need to hear that. You know very well that last year, I even turned down the best opportunity <laughs> I'll ever have in my career. And it was for Nil's sake. If I'd accepted Dr. Russell's scholarship, my chances of going into space would have multiplied by a thousand. I would have gotten to work with him in the dome in the main city of LA. Can you believe it? The first planet ever terraformed and colonized by humankind. And I would have been a part of that. Man, I feel so dumb right now. If I'd known that Neil would end up dumping me, I'd have rushed to accept. Can you imagine how different my life would be? I'd finish my major this year, and then I'd travel to Alea itself to work in the terraforming project in C2. That's my fucking dream. Even before Alea was discovered. Paul sighs. It makes me feel a bit annoyed. He needs to say his name already. I'm not sure if he said his name yet, but he needs to say it again, because I'm tired of not knowing how to pronounce it. <gasps> What's this? What? 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 What are you doing? Are you... Are you bringing your face close to mine? And how many times have you said those same words to Nil this last year? Because I can tell you and Lila, and I have heard your regrets to death. It's no use to give up on a chance if you're going to think about it every single day of your life. Worst of all, making your boyfriend feel guilty for forcing you to say no to that chance. I mumble something, trying to deny it, but a part of me knows he's right. It's true that a relationship turns somewhat bitter after I turned down the scholarship. So Nil knew, almost from the start, in fact, that your relationship had an expiration date. He knew, same as Lila and me, that your dream has always been to leave Earth and travel into space. It doesn't really matter if it's do with Dr. Russell's expedition or with another project. We all know you're not going to stay here for long. Especially not now that we finally have a new planet that's suitable for terraforming and colonization. Even if you can't go to Alaya, you'll end up living in a satellite city for in space for sure. Any place but here on Earth. Am I wrong? What? We didn't even see the full CG. We just saw the legs. What happened there? <laughs> I shake my head regretful. I'm sure it'll show us in a, in a second. I've been a terrible boyfriend. Memories flash through my mind. Snippets of conversations. Neil's sad expression and silence after something that wasn't exactly an argument. He never really argued with me. Why bother if he already knew it was futile to try and reason with me? As Paul had pointed out, I decided my life path many years ago when I was a child. Even so, I always thought Nil would come with me to Alaya or to wherever we finally went. How blind I've been. Poor Nil was absolutely biding his time with me all these years. Hey, say something. Are you alright? Stop asking me that. <laughs> What's on your mind then? Are you going to ask Nil to come back? I feel a lump in my throat as I think of Nil's smiling face. I shake my head with sadness. No, you're right. I have given him more pain than joy this last year. I think it's better for him if I leave him alone. 
He's he's great, generous, cheerful, and sweet, and so cute. I'm sure I'll find someone more deserving of him in no time. Crap, I can't stand the idea of seeing around with another guy. A burning pain pierces through my chest. I rub the place with my palm. <laughs> Apparently we're really jealous and territorial. We're not he's not even our boyfriend anymore. He wasn't even that good looking, come on. Our straight friend here is, is a lot. <laughs> How about, how about that? He is one of the romanceable men I know from the opening. <laughs> a hand squeezes my shoulder. Are you truly ready to let him go? No, but I will. I'm 100% decided. That's brave of you and determined. What are you going to do then? Hmm? I mean, are you going to talk with Dr. Russell about the possibility of getting that scholarship again? A bitter laugh that sounds more like a bark escapes through my lips. Are you out of your mind? There's no way in hell he'd accept me back onto his project. Why? What did you do? You won't know unless you ask. But why is he so convinced that, uh, that he can't get back on the project? Paul, come on! You should have seen his disappointed face when I told him I wasn't accepting his scholarship. I bet he surely thinks of me as a vain, changeable, and unreliable person who acts on a whim. He'll never consider me as a solid option now. Why not? Your grades are at the top of your class. Excuse me, they are the top ones, not just at the top. <laughs> okay, we're really, we're really prideful too. See? Then I'm sure I'll still think you're the best option for his project. Ugh, you just don't understand how this works at all. If you had met Dr. Rosso, you wouldn't suggest it, I can assure you. But I'll give it some thought, okay? Right, you don't have anything to lose by asking. That's quite true. Since I've lost the person I've always thought of as the love of my life, I should at least really focus on my career now, even though apparently I've been doing that from the very start. Let's not lose him for no reason, at least. I wonder what Nil is doing right now. Is he drinking with his friends, too, trying to chase away the sadness? Or has he already moved on to other men? <laughs> God, he's probably already fucking some other guy. That, that, that asshole. Oh. <laughs> Or is he alone at home thinking about me, about our happy shared moments? I fucking doubt it. I seriously contemplate the idea of phoning him right now. Are you feeling any better? Hmm, your eyes are glazed. I take his beer and gulp down the remaining liquid. It's lukewarm. God, I love piss, piss temperature beer. That means I need more alcohol. Sure, let's go inside and search for Lila, unless... Hmm, any other options? <laughs> we could go behind the alley and <laughs> fool around. He looks away with a soft blush on his cheeks. We could go to another place that gay bar used to go to isn't far from here. I shake my head with a chuckle. I don't think a hookup is what I need right now, Paul. But it would take your mind off everything. I don't like the idea of letting you go back home feeling like crap and drunk texting nil. Wait, so is he straight? Did I just assume he was straight? <laughs> I don't know what he is. I've rubbed my temples upset. Is Paul reading my mind or what? Because texting or phoning nil is exactly what I was thinking about a moment ago. I start considering his suggestion. But won't you feel awkward in a gay bar, Paul? Okay, so he is straight. Why was he blushing then? Nah, don't worry, it's a bar after all, right? I can have a beer there without a problem. Besides, I like it when all the guys flirt with me and I can turn them down and act superior to them. It really, it really fuels my ego. Oh, oh okay, I mean, uh, if that's how you wanna, okay, let's go, if you wanna fuel your ego. As I step in the familiar place with pole and toe, I wonder what the hell I'm doing here. The music is too loud and I have to push past a lot of sweaty bodies to reach the counter. So this is where you usually come with your gay friends. I nod full of uneasiness. In fact, they're more acquaintances than friends. People I used to hang out with sometimes, especially back when I was still in high school. They're fun, but I always feel too serious and responsible when I'm with them, and I don't like to be a party pooper. So I've distanced myself from them. I usually prefer spending time with Nil or hanging out with Pole and Lila. I really hope I won't meet Nil here. <laughs> oh, I bet he would be here, already looking for a new piece of meat to fill him up inside. Because apparently, I was never enough for him. I could never fill him up just the way he wanted. I look around with panic. Paul pushes a rum and coal in my direction. 
Here, drink! Stop searching the bar with that face, please! Oh, sorry. I sip my drink. There's no trace of Nil or any other familiar face, to be honest. So perhaps my old friends have moved to another bar. The other option, of course, is that they have finally grown up and now avoid going out on weekdays. Perhaps the end of my drink, I start to... By the end of my drink, I start to relax. Paul replaces my glass with a new one before I can ask. Later, I lose count of how many rum and colas I drink and how many people I've danced with. Are you trying to get me drunk, Paul? Are you after this ass? Because I'll, I'll be a bottom for you. I've never bottomed, but I'll let you be my first. I'll lose my bottom virginity to you. There's currently a hand on my waist, and when I look up, a pair of beautiful black eyes match that hand. It doesn't seem like Paul is by my side anymore, but I didn't notice when he left. The guy I'm dancing with pushes me gently to my private- to the private booths. Oh, okay, mild adult situation. Seems like it's- it's- it's green for YouTube. I love this! <laughs> I don't have to wonder anymore. So it seems probably okay. Let's- let's go. The night air cools my mind a bit, luckily. I know Paul had the best of intentions when he suggested coming here, but this is not what I needed. Wait. Is- I clicked, I clicked on the situation, right? I didn't skip it, did I? <laughs> I felt so wrong kissing someone who wasn't, okay, he made, he made it sound like he was, like he, he said he didn't need it. Can I scroll back in this game? Oh, I can. Yeah, you, you can, okay. Yeah, but he said um, that he wasn't ready for it. Oh wait, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> okay. I felt so wrong kissing someone who wasn't nil. I don't think I'll be ready for that in for a while. Meanwhile, I checked the time. So nothing actually happened. <laughs> so we, we 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 checked. We did the option, but nothing really happened. Just that we kissed someone. Was that did that? Did we really need a little option there to t ask us whether or not we want that? I mean, this is a Yaoi VN. I mean, if we're not kissing somebody, what are we doing? I, I checked the time on my memory bracelet. It's only one o'clock. If I go home now, I could have a coffee to sober up and work on my project for a couple of hours. I don't have class until 8.30 tomorrow, so as long as I keep a, as long as I sleep for around four hours, I'll be able to function. Ugh, me. My alcohol-clogged mind decides that it's a fantastic idea, so I start walking back home. Hi, guys. Um, so... I realized that I was an idiot and I did accidentally skip this scene um, <laughs> because I saw a mild sex situation and so I clicked on it thinking, yeah, I want a mild sex, you know, situation. I want to read that. And that was actually skip it. I didn't realize that was actually skip it. I had to click keep reading because I'm an idiot. I was, I was an idiot. And, but so I had to record this after I finished the whole episode. <laughs> um, but here we are. We sit on the familiar red couches. I've been here more than once in the past with Nil. Nil. No, my name is... I kiss him before he has a chance to finish the sentence. I don't want to know his name. You're Nil tonight. Can you, can you act like a bitchy twink boy? I really need that. I close my eyes at once and let the alcohol in my blood take the reins. The guy kisses me back with fervor. He devours me with hungry, wet kisses. I enjoy it with my mind blank, all of it. His hands slipping inside my shirt and running over my chest. His pierced tongue playing with mine. I reach for his hair and a sob escapes through my lips when I find it too short. Not like the long bangs I'm used to caressing. <laughs> I move back on the couch, refusing to open my eyes. What's wrong? I stand up, balancing myself against the wall. So, sorry, I'm really sorry, but I have to leave now. No, we didn't even do anything. I'm so stupid, I can't even blame the alcohol. No matter how drunk I am right now, I knew perfectly well what I was doing. You sure? That's a pity, dude. Can you give me your number? Or we could meet here tomorrow if you want. I wanna fuck you, man. Oh, that's... that's beautiful. I wish someone wanted to fuck me, too. This stranger is giving me more... is giving... is giving this guy more attention than anyone's ever given me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I shake my head in refusal. I look at him... him at last. He really has beautiful eyes, but he's not nil. He's not a twink. I'm sorry. 
There's nothing else I can say to him. I feel like crap, so I'm not able to give him any other excuse. I stagger towards the exit and reach the street. All right. <laughs> okay, sorry I skipped that. But um, here, I'll just return you back to the video. <laughs> The hours rapidly go while I research for my project. I'm on my fourth and last year of environmental engineering. I chose this major because I thought it was the best option for filling my dream and living and working in space. I've always felt attracted to the stars, but as a kid, I was just one of the million normal children who daydreamed about becoming an astronaut. Then the first satellite city launched when I was 11 and my whole world turned upside down. My childish dream became an obsession. Living in space wasn't a foolish idea anymore, but an attainable one. However, not everybody was able to travel to the satellite city. That first prototype and the ones that followed were populated by engineers specialized in all the things that new environments needed. As a result, my university major was decided early on. And then five years ago, when I was taking my entrance exams, the scientific community dropped the bomb. They discovered a planet that could be terraformed to have suitable conditions for human life, thanks to new technologies tested at the satellite city was applied. I spent these last five years researching and keeping all the data about Ale Ale Alea. <laughs> my dream came true. I must admit that right now, I'm mourning the loss of my scholarship at Dr. Russell more than the loss of Nil. I'm, I'm a horrible human being. But the fact is, that Paul is right. I've been trying to acclimate to the idea of staying on Earth forever with Nil by my side and working on Alea's new technology from here. Why couldn't Nil come with us? And it's only made me feel bitter all the time. Nil is a great person and I love him, but he's always been the second in my heart when compared to Aleia. Damn, I feel like crap. I should phone Nil and apologize. He deserves that. But right now, all I can think about is how I can turn back the clock and get my life back on track. I'm on my own now, so there's nothing in the way between my dream and me. I open a chat window. Okay, are we gonna are we gonna get into some sexy chats online? Maybe f <laughs> maybe arrange a hookup. Maybe. I don't really expect that he'll get my call, but surprisingly, the window lights up and Paul's bleary eyes stare at me through the screen. Hey, Paul, are you up? Uh, what the hell, tears? <sighs> what what time is it? Shut up, bitch! Take off those pants. Let me see that dick. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a quarter past five. Come on, video sex chat with me, God. Paul, are you awake? Tears. It's fucking dark outside. What? What the hell are you doing still at your computer? It's, it's dark outside. How can you? How can you still be using your computer? That's that's lunacy. <laughs> I mean, think about what you're doing to your eyes, staring at a computer all day. Like, what are you even saying, Paul? Literally, everyone does this. <laughs> like, if you don't fucking use your computer when it's dark outside, then that's odd. What kind of? I don't even know how to break that statement down. I couldn't sleep, so I worked for a while instead. I've also been thinking. Look, that's great and everything, but I have class in the morning. <laughs> in around four hours, in fact. Oh, so that's just enough time to come on me for ca on camera. Let's do it. I just wanted to let you know I've decided to follow your advice and ask Dr. Russell for another chance. Did we really need to call him in the middle of the night for that? I'll go to his office tomorrow and try my luck with him. Oh, <laughs> that's fantastic. I'm glad you made up your mind. <laughs> I chuckle. His eyelids are dro drooping as he speaks. Thank you again for your support, Paul. I don't know what I'd do without you. Wake up someone else, I guess. <laughs> Alright, go back to sleep. But no one else has a dick as big as yours. I still remember when we were in high school and changing in the locker room. It's been ingrained into my memory. The image turns black without a single see you later from him. I guess he was really put off by that last comment of mine. <laughs> it was a really great dick. I don't know why he's so embarrassed. I chuckle again in a good mood. I decide perhaps it's time for me to go to bed as well. If I want to sleep at least a couple hours before class. When I step into the cafeteria the next morning and see Lila and Paul in our usual spot, I feel less certain than I did the night before. Oh look, if it isn't my alarm clock, good morning I guess.
Um, okay, Lila. Let's, um... Ah! Oh, not so loud! I have a migraine! And whose fault is that? Terse, do you know? This party animal here met some friends at the night spa and completely forgot about it being a weekday, it seems. I didn't go back home all that late, but I skipped my first class so I could sleep a bit more. Oh, wow, did she get frisky with some of the guys? Yeah, get that dick. I wish we got some dick. Then stop complaining! Damn. He practically yells directly into her skull. Lila covers her ears, flinching, and can't help but laugh. And I can't help but laugh at them. I sit down with my lunch. Lila sobs into her latte and murmurs, mutters about her hateful friends. Paul leaves her alone. Sorry for waking you up. I was really excited and needed to speak to someone. Paul shrugs with a smile. Don't sweat it. What about now? Are you still as excited about the prospect of talking to your teacher? I frown. Well, I'm kind of having second thoughts. Chickening out so soon? No way. Finish your meal and go to his office. He'll probably kick me out as soon as he sees my face. Well, you don't know until you try, pussy boy. Do you need me to go with you now or what? Am I a toddler now? Okay, fine. I'll call you later to tell you how it goes. Should I get the tissues ready for you? A shudder runs down my spine. Probably. And a rum bottle, please. But no more clubbing tonight. Barely half an hour later, I knock on Dr. Russell's door, feeling uneasy. Come in. Ooh, come in. I push the door slightly open and peek inside. If he's too busy or makes an angry face, I'll beg his pardon and retreat. Oh, isn't this one of the romanceable men? We're we gonna fuck our sensei? Let's do it. Instead, he raises an eyebrow, and he's monocle man at the beginning. I was like, I don't think so. But I'll, I'll, I'll keep an open mind. <laughs> and you are... Tears April. I'm a fourth year in environmental engineering. Last year you taught me containment engineering and... Ah, yes. Now I remember. You are the brat whom I offered a post in my team and had the gall to refuse it. Oh my god, is he gonna be an asshole? I... I... Alright, well, um, you just dropped to the bottom of the list of routes I'm going for. I swallow nervously. Perhaps I should leave this office now. Sit down, please. Don't make me speak looking up to you, or my neck will resent it. What the fuck? Fuck you. I do his ass. I try to keep his self-confident attitude and sit accordingly. His desk, even when he's obviously busy, is totally tidy and spotless. So, please tell me, to what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? You are not my pupil this term. I keep my polite smile plastered on my face, but I covertly wipe my sweaty palms on my trousers. After all, Dr. Russell is the department head of the environmental engineering department, and he's a prominent figure in our field. I'm not surprised- it's not surprising he's in charge of designing the dome that will cover the inhabited part of Alaya. I better not fuck this up. I wanted to know if perhaps there's still a place for me in your team, sir? Ooh, that's interesting. So, you've changed your mind, hmm? Correct <laughs> me if I'm wrong, but didn't you turn down my offer? Because you decided staying on Earth with your sweetheart was more important than a career in terraforming. Okay, that was a lot more than, um, what was, uh, right here on the screen, but okay. <laughs> okay, here it is. What? Why is he being a douchebag to us? So we decided to stay on Earth to be with our boyfriend. Like, I mean, does he have to get personally fucking offended about it? Like, literally. Unless he's in love with us. And that's why he's offended. <laughs> okay, I, I get it. I, I, I'm trying to understand him. I'm trying to get in the character's head. H how? How the heck does he know? I never told him about that, and he didn't even- we didn't even tell him about that, which means he went snooping to find out because he was jealous! Aha! <laughs> Have people been gossiping behind my back? I try to compose my face and answer, but he cuts me off before I can let out a single word. You decided on your priorities last year, and I respect that. No, so you don't. don't. Come changing them again. This career is tough, boy. Okay, he did it again. But he does not respect our priorities, that is obvious. And this project specifically needs enthusiastic people. 
professionals who put their work before any other thing. We will have the lives of millions of people in our hands. We can't afford the luxury of choosing our families, our partners, or our friends before work. That's for a different kind of people. Got it? Then, please, leave and close the door behind you. Don't waste my time anymore. I stay there in silence, dumbfounded and first, and fist my hands in anger and confusion. I'm ready to put my career before anything else. And my grades are the best in my class. Good for you. I'm sure in the future you'll be the chief engineer of some waste management plan, or you can even end up working in a satellite city. You have a brilliant career ahead of you. Just not with me. His voice suddenly turns icy, and any remaining politeness is gone. So now, if you please, off you go. Unless you want me to call security. There's no hesitation or space for an answer in his tone. I get up feeling defeated and angry with myself. If only I hadn't wasted my chance last year. The opportunity is now lost. What? Fuck you. I'm not leaving this office. Fuck you, asshole. There's nothing else I can do to get that scholarship back, I know it. So I will have to wait until a new chance to- Wait, did I select leave the office? Or don't leave? I meant to select don't leave. I might have- Can I go back? Okay. <laughs> I walk two steps towards the door, but then I stop and face Dr. Russell again. No. He blinks twice. Heard me, bitch? No. No. It was difficult for me to come see you again and beg you for another chance. So I'm not leaving until I've got it. He chuckles and shakes his head in disbelief, but he doesn't make a move towards the security button. Working in space has always been my dream, even before they discovered a land. So just tell me what I need to do, and I'll do it. You want me to beg on my knees? I can do that. How about... <laughs> How about I ask you to do something else? How about I ask you to get on your knees and suck this dick? Do you want me to grade your people's work? I'll do that as well. I'll bring you coffee, do your errands, and whatever else you ask from me. Oh. So you're basically offering to be my slave, hmm? Oh no. I've been a slave recently with Karn. I, I don't know if I'm ready to be that again. <laughs> don't know if I'm ready for that BDSM. Yes! Because in the end, you'll have the best project assistant you've ever dreamt of having. Mmm, you praise yourself a lot, I see. Because I know I can do a great job here. Give me a position, and you'll never regret it. He leans back in his chair. If at first he seems amused by my tirade, he's now deep in thought. He taps his fingers on the pristine surface of his table. I hold my breath. Although your offer of being my slave is pretty appealing, I think it would be more suitable to give you a test task. He signals my memory bracelet. I raise my forearm and put my wrist close to his computer. I'm transferring some data to you. This is something we've been recently working on. Calculating the density of the material which will be used in the dome. If you are able to find a reasonable outcome by, let's say, tomorrow at the same time, I'll give you another chance. You... you give me the scholarship? Why are we blushing about it? I still can't believe my ears! The sly smile he's offering doesn't make me trust him, to be honest. He seems to be having too much fun with me. Well, we'll see. It's up to you now. He shrugs and turns his attention towards his computer again. I get up feeling a bit awkward and slightly bow my head. Thank you for this opportunity, sir. I'll do my best. You won't regret it. He mumbles without even looking at me, already typing. Stop calling me sir, for a start. For God's sake. <laughs> I'm not that old. I'm only, I'm only, well, how old was he? I don't remember. <laughs> but I'm, I'm barely in my thirties. Sure, I'm not a sir. Uh, professor. He sighs and I scurry out of the office before he decides to change his mind. Alright guys, um, I think I'm gonna end this episode here, but thank you guys for watching, and I can't wait to meet, um, there's still another guy we're missing, I think, that we haven't met yet, that might be our love interest, but, um, I'll see you guys in the next episode, bye!